Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? In case you were wondering, my gig last night went great. I remembered all the songs. I remembered where all the bridges were. I know how to play the bass guitar. I know how to um, play these songs. It's like riding a bike. I just haven't played them in nine months. So I got back on the bike and it was fine. I'm going to talk tonight about something that's uh, not like riding a bike for me. And that's running a skills-based system as opposed to a class and level-based system. So this is really isn't going to be like a how-to video or tips and tricks or all that kind of stuff. It's more like, you know, what's my journey been or what is it continuing to be at this point? Because I'm in the middle of the journey in terms of learning how to do this, the things that I've had trouble with, the, the things I've noticed about it, um, errors I've made, the, some of the advice I've gotten, some of the experiences I've had so far, and my the experience of my transition. So anyhow, um, to you know, playing both at this point, both class and level and skills-based systems, because I'm not abandoning the ones I you know know and love. So. I and a bunch of my contemporaries, you know, not all of them, but a bunch of us, kind of like, um, you know, resisted playing skills-based systems for a long time, and it almost had like kind of a mild disdain for them. And you know, I know how to run a game like Lamentations of the Flame Princess, which is just reskin basic, you know, D and D, Moldvay D and D. There's a thin little book. There's no real skill system in there, except for the specialist, which is you know, the thief or the rogue, if you're of that persuasion. Uh, really easy to adjudicate and run. And what I and a lot of my um, friends uh, saw, or you know, our misconceptions, eh? But what we saw was like, you know, back in, in these type games, characters were very competent. I almost call these like archetype based games as opposed to class and level. It's, that's not really a real term, it's just something I just made up. Um, but the idea that like everybody knows what the warrior type guy is, and everybody knows what the kind of like, you know, survivalist type guy is, the sneaky guy, uh, even the traveling adventuring wizard, there's an archetype for that. It's different than the wizard that's in his tower, stirring cauldrons and looking up, uh, you know, looking in his library and looking up all various tomes. The traveling adventuring wizard, well, he's the guy that knows how to light a fire, knows how to ride a horse, knows how to survive in the wilderness for a while, because you know what, if he didn't know how to do those things, he'd be dead in a week. So it kind of had that archetype. So the assumption was these characters were broadly skilled. They knew how to do a lot of stuff. And what happened, at least in their mind, whether it was a game that was contemporary with the old school D&D, you know, back in the day, or when D&D got a skill system shoehorned into it, or, you know, even games that were just like, basically, they start out, they're, oh, there, there you go, skills-based games. These are adventure, I'm going to talk about the ubiquity-based game, because that's the one I'm using, but it really applies just about any skills-based system when it comes right down to it. What we saw was that all of a sudden, now here's a game that um, puts all these skills down on a piece of paper, and you have to you know, buy ranks or points or levels or whatever it is, spend resources on all these skills. And if you do not, then by default, you can no longer do these things. And we're like, wait a minute, my guy used to be able to do this, and now he couldn't do it anymore. You know, we even watched games pop up where, you know, people were doing it a little bit wrong, but like they'd spend all these points and resources and discover, well, their character was homeless and couldn't drive a car. You know, <laughs> that was kind of the experience I had, you know, looking at some skills based games or even playing like games like Pathfinder where there was a skill system in it. And some of the rules actually kind of supported that sort of mindset. And so it's, it's been a bit of a journey for me to figure out like how to kind of blend my old school sensibilities. And it sounds like it's superior. It's not what I mean, but the way I normally play with a, a game that's more skills based. And you know, I've had some advice on how to do that um, because they, they said, well, that's probably the best way to do it in the first place. I'll give you an example about this you know, to give you an idea of what I mean. And this is not a class and level based game versus skill based game video at all. It's not what it is. It's really about like learning how to do, you know, learning how to do skills based games as well. So get a game like this. And here my, here's my algorithm for running like an old school uh, type game, OSR type game. I don't really call for roles. People say, you know, what they want to do until all of a sudden a character or a player says, my character does this. And I'm like, really? It's, when it's a head scratcher, like you're going to do what? That sounds hard. And out come the dice. Okay, give me a 2d6 roll, 3d6 under your ability, wh whatever it happens to be. Because that sounds a little bit hard at that point. Or it could be something they encounter in the environment that I put there. So they're trying to get, you know, from point A to point B, there's a slippery plank between two buildings. You know, okay, I've used that example a lot, but that's tough. So now out come the dice, and you're going to roll something at that point. So, you know, that, that was my general algorithm. And what um, the, some of the mistakes I was making in, like, running Ubiquity was, you know, I was calling for rolls too much or invoking the mechanic too much and saying, at least saying, okay, what, what's, your, what's your ability to do stealth or search or what have you? And maybe I wasn't making them, you know, roll dice, but, like, okay, use the average. And there is some... Um, I guess support for that in the rules a little bit because in something like Leagues of Adventure, I'll make sure I'm holding you the cover this time, <laughs> you know, you put points in skills and they're based off attributes and you can look at my videos on that or look at Rune Slingers or a couple other people have made ubiquity based videos. Uh, but the idea is that you may have a dice pool because they're binary dice pass fail and you can take the average 
uh, in order to succeed sometimes if, if the if the task or whatever have you is you know not all that important or if you've got time uh, so maybe you have a six die pool the average would be three there's some precedence for for taking the average but there's also um, rules in there which say if you haven't put any ranks in these um, skills at all unless you're taking it as a zero level skill in which case you're putting like half a point into it at that point you have to take a negative two die hit to this die pool as the average uh, attribute as a two that means you have no chance you're rolling no dice which means you're going to get no successes unless you spend some style points or you know use some chance dice and what have you and even then it's not going to be a great chance so there's a little bit of a precedence for the fact or the idea that people can't do things that aren't on their um, skill list they put money into or you know points into you know, and certainly you look through the skill um, list in a game like this, or a lot of games. Okay, well, unless you put some kind of ranks into something, you're not going to be a heart surgeon. You know, you're not going to do some quantum physics or all that kind of stuff. Um, also, some of the more classic examples. But you know, there, there is, you know, depending on how you, um, when you pull the trigger on this, um, you have some may, might have some chance of doing some things that you're not necessarily uh, skilled at or that skilled at. And you know the the um, the advice I got from a couple of people was, hey, you know what? Run a kind of like an OSR game. And these are people that are really skilled with using this. Run it like an OSR game, and, and don't really call for a skill roll until you're kind of scratching your head, saying, okay, that sounds kind of hard. You know, at this point, um, I found myself doing a couple things. You know, first of all, I was looking at the rules and just saying, okay, well, there's difficulty levels built in right here. You know, one one to five, you know, or plus successes. And all right, so one success is easy. And so, you know, to me, I'm not sure if I have to kind of reskin uh, my perspective on that to, uh, you know, call this like easy for something that's a little hard. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, but at that point, too, once uh, once a roll is, is called for, even though the game like this, I, uh, you know, as you take the average, or it gives you the opportunity to take the average. I think what I was also doing in, in some of these sessions was I was letting people take the average too often. And, uh, you know, I've certainly had them roll dice as well, but, you know, taking the average all the time, um, removes the ability to have some spectacular failures and kind of generates a little bit too much auto success. You know, likewise, the game, you know, really, at least ubiquity, is, is really fueled by style points an awful lot. And it's, it's a commodity that, you know, goes back and forward, you know, really fast in the game if you're doing it correctly. Um, as, at least as far as I understand, that's, that's definitely the way it worked really fun in, in the games that I've played in. Um, but, you know, style points, unlike other games that have some kind of in-game resource, really represents the idea that your character is pushing themselves above and beyond. And so I had a couple opportunity, or a couple times rather, instances where people would spend style points to do something, and I was probably letting them get away with too much, or you know, just um, you know, letting them take the average when I really shouldn't have, because at that point it was something that was really, really difficult. So they should have been rolling. So it's one of those nuances where I need to learn more of like how to utilize the mechanic. I mean, when to pull the trigger and then when to actually make them roll dice. One of the things that I found out, I, I re-looked at the math a little bit, because I remember did a, I did a video on uh, looking at Ubiquity first impressions some time ago and really crunched a bunch of numbers. I may um, link the any dice macro down here again and you can and you can like switch it to at least. And you'll see that for the most part, um, the average of taking the average uh, of the uh, various size dice pools is about 65% of the time you'll, you'll succeed which is not automatic success. You know, that's 35% of the time that you're going to fail. So it does not necessarily indicate automatic uh, success. So, uh, you know, I should have had them rolling dice a lot more often because it would have, you know, given them some opportunities to fail more. Um, also, you know, I, I noticed that looking at the math, you know, one, getting one or two successes over what your average would be, it gets very, very hard. You know, by the time you're, you're two successes over what your average would be, you're, you're looking at like, you know, um, like 11, 15% at the most. You know, not really, uh, not really good <laughs> at doing it at that, that point. Um, so, need to have rolled dice a little bit more often, but also be more judicious about like when do I um, call for the roll in the first place? Just because they're searching for something, is this something like you know has somebody left keys in their car, or we're opening up a bunch of trunks looking for weapons in police cars? Okay, you ought to be able to find that stuff without using a roll. So, uh, I think I was I was falling into that trap of uh, looking at these the uh, character sheets too much, and if, you know, if they weren't saying things that were brain surgery or you know, rocket science and all that kind of stuff, I probably should have been a little bit more, uh, used a little more common sense and assumed some broad level of skill. You know, maybe I just need to retool my, um, by thinking to have uh, investment in these skills mean a little bit more than you know, just barely, you know, somewhat familiar with or something that somebody could do um, you know, when they're not under pressure. And you know, certainly there's rules that, that uh, um, go into like you know the more time you take doing something you'll, you'll actually get some pretty big bonuses or if you have you know the right tools and likewise if you're rushed for time you'll get some pretty severe penalties no system is perfect 
and you know a, a linear die roll system is not perfect, and a, and a bell curve you know, dice pull system is not perfect. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. And here's some of the other things I, I've noticed in the numbers. And this is more of a psychological thing, but it, but it does have an impact. And you know, there's there's no perfect game in the middle. But you know, um, this probably could have been a separate video, but I decided to kind of shoehorn it in, all in here because it, it does, at least for me, indicate you know a, a nuance of the game. You know, if you've got a game like uh, that uses, like, say, D20 rolls, like, you know, D&D, &D, you know, where you're going to add these skill systems in there later on, like, say, Pathfinder. So, one's games I don't like. <laughs> uh, or any kind of game that uses, like, percentile dice. Okay, these are linear rolls. You roll a really small dice, you know, one or two dice, and you, you figure out right away, like, where, you know, whether you succeed or fail. Duh. Um, what a lot of people have uh, critiques about that is it's very, very random. You have a guy that say, okay, well, he succeeds at, like, say, 15 or better. Well, there's an awful lot of time he fails, like, with a one or a two, you know, really underperforms. And there's a lot of times he really overperforms and gets, like, a 20 or 19 or something, which is not so realistic. You know, you'd expect people to perform pretty much at their level of competence all the time. So there's a lot of critique, especially when you're inserting degrees of failure into that based on, like, how many successes, you know, over you get or, or, or you know, under. Um, that you get it in something like that. So th that's a valid cri uh, cri criticism of like using a linear die roll. There's something else though that happens with a, uh, a bell curve, you know, using a die pull. Now all of a sudden you're rolling this big giant handful of dice. You know? What happens is you get this nice little bell curve. Okay, advantage, your person performs really well or, you know, at the, their stated level of competence. You've got that guy with a three die pull or six die pull and ubiquity. Okay. You know, three success is pretty easy for him about 65% of the time, okay? But getting that real spectacular failure or that real spectacular success on either end of the, uh, the bell curve at that point happens much less frequently than it does in, um, in a linear die roll. That's not a bad thing. You expect him to perform right in that middle, but all of a sudden you run into this problem with, like, uh, with a game like Ubiquity where you kind of need to use the style points at that point instance because once you're looking for like say two successes over what you can normally do then you're looking at like a 15 percent chance not so good then it's then you know the game is that's what i mean the game is kind of run on that in-game commodity either you play a really gritty game which is an option we've been playing ubiquity they, they have options of using style points or not using style points or how much the style points are worth you can go for this really super gritty feel but it becomes the game becomes very very predictable uh, and so you kind of need to use style points to kind of push yourself over the edge. That is the mojo. You know, it's another thing I need to learn how to um, do is just run a pulp game in the first place, which is more cinematic and more pulpy. And there's definitely a feel in all these ubiquity-based games where it is. I, I always feel like I should have a soundtrack in the background. Like I'm always, I'm always hearing like Indiana, the Indiana Jones uh, soundtrack. It always something involves violins and really lively music. You know, all those musketeer fight scenes and everything else. You know, trumpets and violins and the whole, you, you know, the kind of music I'm talking about in all these movies. I always feel like there should be some kind of soundtrack going on the whole time. So, uh, yeah, that, that's been my experience uh, so far in running skills-based systems. Some of the th mistakes that I've made, some of the things I still need to kind of, uh, I think a lot of it is like a psychology thing. Like, how do I wrap my head around this? When do I really call for a roll? How do I really envision these, you know, um, instances where they're taking the average or rolling the dice? Um, you know, how do I and the, the other players at the table perceive what's really going on? Um, so, so far, that that's, you know, right now, that's been my journey. That's, that's you know, kind of what I'm... Uh, that's, I don't want to say up against, but that's the uh, the hurdles I've been going under or the the evolution I've been going through. So what has your evolution been with all that? You know, what is your psychological impact on skill um, or, or psychological take rather on skill based uh, systems? You know, how did you wrap your head around it if you made a transition from one to the other? How do you make uh, how do you wrap your head around it when you're making the transition from one to another when you're playing two different games when you're playing like class and level and flip over to playing skill based? Is it something you think about at all? Is it strictly mechanical for you? I'd like to hear your take on all this. And sorry that video rambled, but you know, I'm not good at this yet. So we'll uh, you know wait and see.